You may have heard of the Monster Mash, but now it's time to do the Monster Bash. I have been excitedly waiting for this Monster Bash since, well, last Monster Bash. I had so much fun, and I am already just wanting to dive in and make some type of monstrosity. For those of you who are watching this video from the playlist of everybody else's monster bashes and you haven't been here before, hi, I'm Zambies. And for those of you who have no idea what monster bash is, let me just quickly fill you in. Monster bash is where a bunch of fellow creatives with a love for the weird get together and draw six cards from a massive pile of random monster parts. Working off those cards, we reach deep in our imagination and create our very own unique monster. And you're just committing yourself to having to make this thing, you know, in the next month or however long. So it's fine. You know, you'll be fine. Are you ready to make a monster? Now, if you want to make your own monster, the card generator is in the description below. I've already picked my cards, as you saw, but I did print them out right here so you can see. So I have been keeping a giant bag of my children's old, broken, unwanted toys for, well, this occasion. I've started making some terrain out of pieces, but there's just some things in here that I think will be a good baseline for building this monster. Let's see what we got. Time to dig in some trash to find some treasure. This poor Slinky. Aha. This. This is what I knew I had and would be absolutely perfect. I didn't think out of all the things I would find an armadillo shell. I'm guessing this is from a Disney movie, but bingo. We have our torso. And the face, the face is already kind of cat-like. I think I can accentuate some of these features and uh, I can make that look like a kitty. Maybe the head will be a kitty. <laughs> it's a Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> it's a donut Hot Wheels. Delicious and fast. What happened to this puppy? <laughs> Potential. Ooh. Okay. All right. I think this is the closest thing I'm going to find to these like mantis arms. I think that might work. I might be able to integrate that in. Yeah. Originally, I was thinking that as legs, but I could have antennas. Hmm. The wheels are turning. Kitty tentacles, anyone? Oh, look, it's my favorite dinosaur. What's your favorite dinosaur? Nobody asks you that anymore. What's wrong with adults? I think I've exhausted all of my options out of this bag. So what I'm working with all right here. Let's see what we can make out of this. The first step was to figure out how to break apart and chop up some of these toys. And honestly, it was much harder than I thought. I was using hobby tools and underestimated how well put together some of these toys are. I found this Pokemon and decided to use it for the body, but I needed to cut off his head first. And since my son likes to watch my YouTube videos, I'm sorry, buddy. But I did promise him we would make our own monsters after this. The first shell wasn't big enough, so I had to cut the face out and put it into the middle shell. I started out with a basic idea of my monster, and as time went on, I began to change things. I usually like to sketch out my ideas before just diving in. But since I was mashing together a bunch of toys like Tetris, I figured I'd just start and see where it goes. I'm using the rest of my old Milliput to sculpt with. 
To incorporate the cat card, I decided to sculpt fur on most of the body using a Cricut tool. Admittedly, sculpting is not my comfort zone. I normally just stick to small conversions, basing, or terrain. But I do really believe in stepping outside your comfort zone to challenge yourself. And as I like to say, be brave enough to suck at something new. So this might be amazing or end up meh, but either way, I made art. I didn't originally intend to make the actual cat paws, but I felt like it just fit. The card really pushed me into the cute zone with this monster, and I decided to lean in hard on that cute factor. I also got this Nurgle looking arm card and I didn't really know how to make that not creepy at first. But since there were already gaps in the legs, I figured I could just work with this to cover those areas. I knew I wanted the lore for this creature to be forest related, so I used mushroom spores as inspiration. To finish up the build, I glued the antennas on and wrapped the ends in putty. Then I added two more tails. I let that dry and came back to it a day later to sand it all down and add some little balls on top of the tails to symbolize this abstract noodle arm card I got. He ended up being too big for the toy tree I wanted to use for his base. So I ended up using this wooden box and leaves to decorate it with instead. Now I just needed to paint and put everything together. I have been loving adding LEDs to projects lately. I got these lights at the dollar store and hot glued them around the box. To cover the wires, I glued this undergrowth flocking to it. I rattle can primed my monster and when I went outside to collect him, a bee had already claimed him. I guess he really is a forest friend. While I work on painting this guy, I want to talk a little bit about his backstory. When creating a monster like this, or any creature, it's hard not to let your mind just wander. Where did he come from? Where does he live? What does he do? What should I call him? Well, this is Walter, and Walter is a Waddle Bromby. What is a Waddle Bromby? Well, I'm glad you asked. Waddle Brombies are friends of the Fey folk. They use their branch like antennas to search for and collect acorns. They gather acorns and other treats to put into fairy boxes. Their legs have hole like pouches to collect spores and help pollinate the forest as they walk around throughout it. They can retreat into their hard shell that is both used for camouflage and protection. Their tails mimic the tops of mushrooms, and waddle brombays can shake them together to make a little jingle that the fae will hear when their treasure boxes are full. I didn't sculpt fur all over, but in the moment of painting, I just decided he would look better that way. So I painted the fur texture in, a million overlapping strokes of it, and details until my heart was content. I have created the most whimsically adorable monster bash yet, and I couldn't be happier. I wish Waddle Brown Bays were real, and honestly I want to create some cute illustrative artwork for this creature now. If you enjoyed this video, then I hope you like and subscribe for more of my content. And consider making your very own monster. Happy painting! Are you ready to make a monster? Hmm.